on behalf of myself and uh, Dr. Ezra Amsterdam, who chaired the writing group and the entire writing committee, we are delighted to talk about the 2014 uh, non-ST elevation acute coronary syndrome guideline of the American College of Cardiology and the American Heart Association. This is a full change. This is a rewrite of the original uh, 2007 guideline. And probably the most important thing is terminology because the prior guideline, the 2007 guideline, was called unstable angina, non-ST elevation myocardial infarction. And whereas terminology seems trivial, it really is not, because it is the way we communicate among health professionals and the way we communicate uh, with our patients. And the change in terminology to non-ST elevation acute coronary syndrome really reflects an appreciation that there is a continuity, the same pathophysiology of the disease between unstable angina and non-ST elevation myocardial infarction. They often tend to present in an indistinguishable fashion and the management principles are essentially the same. So now we have new terminology. This is now called non-ST elevation acute coronary syndrome. What we tend to see is that about 70% of patients who have an acute coronary syndrome have this problem, the non-ST elevation of acute coronary syndrome, and that probably accounts for about 625,000 patients every year. Now, how do we differentiate between unstable angina and non-ST elevation myocardial infarction? When the patient comes in, they get an immediate electrocardiogram, and that is done to rule out the ST elevation myocardial infarction, and then they receive a troponin measurement, and those troponin measurements will differentiate. If the troponin levels are normal, it is called unstable angina. If the troponins are abnormal, it is a non-ST elevation myocardial infarction. Now we have another very important issue in terms of terminology for the new guideline. Because in the old one, there were two management strategies. There was an early invasive strategy and an early conservative strategy. Well, the name early invasive strategy remains. And that means these individuals are identified as being, as, as being at substantial risk. And typically, they will go promptly to the cardiac catheterization laboratory. And there, the findings on coronary angiography will dictate what the subsequent management will be. What was in the prior guideline called an initial conservative strategy now has a new name. And it is very important because it reflects what we do. It is an ischemia-guided strategy. And what that means is that these are essentially low-risk patients or patients who, by their choice or their physician's choice, would not elect cardiac catheterization. And they receive guideline-directed medical therapy. They do not receive cardiac catheterization. And only if they become unstable, if they have manifestations of ischemia, then, of course, because they are unstable, they go to the cardiac catheterization laboratory if it's appropriate. So again, two strategies, the early invasive management and the second one, the ischemia-guided strategy. The other features of this new guideline really reflect the evidence-based information that we have had between 2007 and 2014. And over the course of these years, there have been two updates to the guidelines. But even since the last update in 2011, we have new medications that have come on the scene. And these are a special class of medications called uh, P2Y12 inhibitors. They are the ones that keep the platelets from clotting together and forming uh, clots in the vessel. And we have two new drugs in addition to the uh, prior drug. The prior drug available was clopidogrel. The two new drugs are prasugrel and ticagrelor. And we discuss which of those drugs are suitable for which patients and provide guidance uh, to the clinician, both for the early invasive strategy and for the ischemia-guided strategy. 
So what we have with this new guideline, if I am to summarize, is a change in terminology that very importantly affects the pathophysiology or reflects the pathophysiology and the approach to management. So we now name this problem non-ST elevation acute coronary syndrome, the abbreviation NSTEACS, and that incorporates the previous designation of unstable angina and non-ST elevation myocardial infarction. And the other important change in terminology is the early invasive strategy, the same as before, applicable to the majority of patients who have an acute coronary syndrome, but an ischemia-guided strategy for the low-risk patients and also based on patient and physician preference. Thank <laughs> you.